we go. All right, how's the audio quality right now? How's it sounding to you guys? This thing is probably getting in the way of the camera. <laughs> I'll get that out of the way. How are you guys doing? The camera, I got myself a nice headlight. It's like shining down on me so that you can get a good clear view of my face. <laughs> uh, but because the camera, uh, this camera has a feature that tries to sort of balance with the light and everything. There's some moments where it might be a little out of focus here and there. Like it's very sensitive to the, to the focus, uh, but it shouldn't be a huge problem. Sounds crisp and pristine. That's good to hear. All right. Well, I'm going to be booting up the game in just a bit. And from there, we're going to be doing some more audio quality tests. Um, this is the first time I am streaming to you guys all the way from Buffalo. It's crazy how, how quickly things have gone by. It's only been, let's see, it's been about a month since I first moved to Buffalo, but it's been about two months more or less since I last streamed. And the last time I was streamed for you guys, I was playing Pizza Tower. And between the time that I played Pizza Tower to now, a new update dropped where you could play as the noise. So I definitely want to do a stream where I play as the noise. And he is so much fun to play as. So much fun. Oh. I definitely want to play Hi-Fi Rush. I would love to stream that game. I played Hi-Fi Rush. I, I beat it from beginning to end. And I went back and I played hard mode. Super fun game. I would love to stream that game for you guys. I bought it on Steam and I haven't touched it yet because I do intend to do a stream with Hi-Fi Rush. That'll be a lot of fun. Funny thing about Buffalo Wings, I have yet to try them here. And every time I mention that, everyone's like, what? You gotta. And I will. Absolutely, I will. Hold on. I am syncing my Bayonetta data because I forgot that I was playing this game a lot through my Steam Deck. And... I did update my Steam Deck, so it should have all the details, like all my files ready to go. I don't know why, but for some reason, the focusness of the camera seems to be going off for some reason. <laughs> um, I mean, it's not a huge deal, but because um, once I switch to the game, the camera will be tiny anyway, so you won't get to see a lot of my <laughs> details and shit, you know? Oh, the Steam Deck is great. Steam Deck has no problems running Bayonetta whatsoever. Because, I mean, Bayonetta is a game that's like 10 years old. So it's not a huge problem. Um, it's able to run a lot of games surprisingly good. Of course, there's a lot of sacrifices you have to make. You know, like if you, if you want to play something like Death Stranding on Steam Deck, you're going to have to find a nice balance between, you know, performance and graphics and it's not going to be a silky smooth 60 FPS, but there are certainly some games that are so beautifully optimized. It works no matter what you do when you toss it into the Steam Deck. One of my favorite games to play on my Steam Deck is Marvel vs. Capcom 3. And Steam Deck runs that like a dream. And it's great because I love Marvel vs. Capcom 3 a lot. And... The only way to play that portably, officially portably, next to the Steam Deck is the PS Vita. And I'm not going to shell out for a Vita, but I will shell out for a Steam Deck because you get a lot of shit you could do with that thing, you know? How's the new place? I love it. I am enjoying Buffalo. It's a very cold place here. You know, you have to suit up. Make sure you're wearing thermal gear. Make sure you're layered up because it gets pretty cold out there 
On a typical day, it's somewhere between 20 to 30 degrees, but it's nothing I can't handle. I mean, I lived my entire life in Florida, so obviously it was a bit of a culture shock just jumping into Buffalo and being hit with the snow in your face. You know, like I remember when I first saw snow, like the very first time I saw snow was when I came to Buffalo a month ago. And I'm just looking out the window and it's like, wow, it's so beautiful. I open the window and a snow hits me in the eye. It's like, man, this shit sucks. I'm closing the window. <laughs> okay, so I am going to boot up Bayonetta right now. For some reason, I got to accept the terms. What the fuck? Why am I doing that? I played this game on Steam so many times. Oh, well. Sega. All right, we should be good. I'm swapping over now. <laughs> Who's that standing behind me? Don't scare me like that. <laughs> There's nothing behind me. All you're going to see is a sofa. And um, that's pretty much it. All you, you can see from that view is a sofa. But back there, I just have an empty section where there's a rug, and all the way in the back is a little uh, furniture where I have my toys. Like I have a bunch of Sonic the Hedgehog, Earthworm Jim, Gears of War collectibles over there. I don't think you'll be able to see that. All right, so how's the audio now? Oh wait, hold on a sec. For some reason it's not showing up here, hold on. There we go. How's that? Let me know if the audio balance is good. And if it is, I will definitely get started. I'm just going to be doing some Angel Slayer runs. Let's see how far I can go. And once I inevitably die, I'll swap over to the Wonderful 101. How's that? Pristine and crisp, that I'd like to hear. I like to hear that, actually. <laughs> so, if you guys have anything you want to talk about, go ahead, just start chatting. For the time being, I'm going to be a little too occupied focusing on trying to survive Angel Slayer. <laughs> you know, it's been a very long time since I played Bayonetta. I think it's been... Hmm... I don't know, six months since I last played this game because I was busy playing Bayonetta 3, so my muscle memory might get the best of me. Oh, wait a second. Hold on. I just realized something. I'm using a a, a, um, a mod here. No wonder the sky was black. Hold on. What was the key to bring up the, the mod menu? There we go. Hold on. I forgot that I was using a mod that allows me to load up to a specific section. And I need to disable that. Hold on. Sorry about that. It's a good thing I remembered. I'm also going to try to fix a few things here so that I play the game fair and square. Oh, Sifu is really good. That was one of the games I was playing back in Florida. Like, several months before I came to Buffalo, that is also another game I would like to stream for you guys. I was having fun with that game. It's really, really good. Let's see, I want to make sure that I'm not abusing anything here. I think everything should be normal now. Okay, 
Sorry about that. Also, I'm going to turn off my phone notifications so that you guys don't have to hear the annoying beep every single second. Because I always get a lot of messages from a lot of people, you know. <laughs> okay, now we can get this show on the road. Yeah, no, the museum is a tough section. I mean, the game in general is very difficult. It can be almost unforgiving, too, with the age system. Hey, Rapid Cola, how's it going, buddy? Oh no, the age system is really good. I like it a lot. There we go. Nice. Oh, you just got off work? It's great to hear. I forget that, you know, with, with, with the time zones here, you know, I forget that a lot of people are, are up awake uh, in the afternoon now. Because over here, where I'm at, it's currently uh, 8.50 p.m. I can destroy these things right now. Oops. See ya, don't wanna be ya. Nope. Hold on, let me position myself properly. And there we go, goodbye. Fuck outta here. Yeah, cheesy that fall is so good. It's a shame you can only do it here, but that's because of the corner that they're in. Goodbye. 550 over there? Nice. Hey, no, the move went well. Super well. Swell. I'm having the time of my life. Living on my own gives me a chance to really do the things I want to do. Just about the only real obstacle I'm facing is the fact that I do not have a car. I had to give up my car because it wasn't really my car. It belonged to my mom. I was only using it for her. Like, my mom owns two cars, right? So, she was able to let me have one, like, 
she lent one of hers to me and I would use it for everything. But because I came here, you know, mom needed the car for my brother. Because my brother is starting to go to college and eventually he's going to start to work. So he needs that car. So I figured, well, okay, um, I guess I'll trudge on my own, figure my way around here, take the bus. What's lucky for me is uh, my work is right nearby. It's over there. Like within 10 minutes, I'm there within walking distance. Because I live in downtown. So I got a lot of the important things available to me right nearby. So I just need to go walking. To get to the fun places like the mall, I will need to take the bus. But hey, I'm having fun. Eventually I'll be able to afford my own car. You say the stream looks clean? That's good to hear. Because I have the best upload speed over here. Like, okay, so I'm using an, an internet service here called Spectrum, which I heard nothing but bad things about. And I did my research here before moving to Buffalo. Like, I did my research in Florida, and I heard that there are two services here in Buffalo. There's Greenlight and there's Spectrum. Greenlight is the one you want to go with not spectrum mainly because their service is not that stable and for what they offer is kind of pricey green light is the best option now i did learn that here in this neighborhood we do have green light but they are currently in the middle of setting it up so i have no idea how long it's going to take until i have green light here so i had to settle for spectrum however with how bad spectrum is I'm getting internet speed here that's way better than what I had back in Florida. In Florida, my upload speed was only 10 Mbps. Here, it's 20, which is already double what I used to offer like when I streamed back in South Florida. So with that double upload speed, um, the, the image quality is coming in even cleaner and crisper than ever before. And also the internet speed, I decided to jump for the 500 Mbps download speed which is way better than what I had in Florida, which I used to have Comcast in Florida. And Comcast would only offer me 120 Mbps download speed and 10 Mbps upload speed. So here I have 500 download, 20 upload, and it's immensely better. The only problem is the price. I'm not a big fan of that price. I tried to fight for an offer, but what they gave me was shit. So that's why I'm hoping that green light becomes available because their price is so much better for what they offer really good oh yeah i, I um the whole weapon thing uh set to the d-pad i will explore that another day not right now. I heard it was really good. And I assume it's really good because, damn, having all the weapons mapped to the D-pad is a thing of beauty. It's just like playing Devil May Cry 4. Even with 10 Mbps, though, you can still have a good um, stream quality. You just have to tweak around a few settings. Like, I remember, I remember talking to you about this, didn't I? Was it you or was someone else? Where someone was asking, how do I get a good, clean stream with the speed that I, that I was stuck with? And they never really reported back to me, like, with, uh, with uh, advice or anything, you know? Yeah. You feel the pain? <laughs> well, that pain is gone over here. I'm kind of happy, even if I do have a shitty service. That's why I really can't wait for Greenlight to get their fiber hooked up over here.
Oh, I know, I know the pain there, Joseph. It's the same problem with me. Like when when I when I ordered the package from Greenlight, they told me, okay, it'll be ready in two weeks. Two weeks went by, and I called them up, and they're like, oh, um, we're having some technical difficulties at this time. We can't give you an ETA, and it's like, oh dear God, am I gonna have to go with Spectrum? So you know, I reluctantly went with Spectrum. Like I said, for how bad they are, the experience I'm currently having is better than what I had in South Florida. I just want to say, I want to get the Wonderful 101 as my first Switch game ever. It's maybe a weird choice of first game, but I just feel like I could have fun and special time with the game. Listen, Rocky, listen, listen. If you want to get the wonderful 101, that is great, but I wholeheartedly, I am pleading with you, do not get the Switch version, okay? You're going to have a bad time with the Switch version. The Switch version is not terrible by any means. It is not the worst way to play the game, but playing it on the PS4 and the PC and hell, even on Steam Deck is a way better experience because you get solid 60 FPS experience, which you're going to need when it comes to drawing because at low frame rate, your drawing can actually hinder you. Or I should say the frame rate can hinder your drawing because the frame rate will slow the game down, which means that you need to sort of draw with the speed of the frame rate so that your glyphs are not ruined. I do not recommend that you get the Switch version. Please don't. If you have a PS4, get it on that platform instead. If you don't have a PC or a PS4, I guess you can get the Switch, but I would advise against it. Trust me, okay? I have the wonderful 101 on everything. And I put the Switch version just a little bit better than the Wii U version. But if you only have a Switch, well, if you only have a Switch, then that's a shame, but you'll still have a good time. <laughs> you have a good night, buddy. Thanks for catching the stream. I'll be back tomorrow to do some Bayonetta 2 Tag Climax streams. So if any of you guys want to join up with me, well, you're welcome to join me. Oh no, I know. I know. We only had the Wii U for a decade. Trust me. I was obsessed with the game no matter how bad it was. Because it was really good when it came to the gameplay. But. Dude. When when they announced the Wonderful 101 for the PC. I nearly cried. Because I never expected in a million years to hear that kind of news. Because the Wonderful 101 is a game published by Nintendo. So to hear this game that was originally published by Nintendo, a game that is obscure beyond belief, mind you. Getting a second chance on the PC and the PS4 was a dream come true. Now, today, the PC version is kind of borked. Like, Platinum Games hasn't done jack shit to fix the problems. But even with those problems aside, it's still a breathtaking experience. Get out of here. God, when, when I saw the, the, the announcement of the Kickstarter, I was like, bro, where do I put my money? Where do I put it? Where do I do it? I'll give you a thousand bucks. Which, okay, no, I didn't give him a thousand bucks. But I gave him just enough money so that I can get the, um, the pendant, which I have. Hold on. Here it is. My wonderful 101 pendant. 
which means that when I wear this, I, I can become wonder set. Hold on a sec. There it is. I'm wearing that shit, man. Although it's, it's, it's actually kind of heavy. This will probably give me a headache after a while wearing it on my neck. It's actually really heavy. But yeah. Yeah. God, I love fighting against Grace and Glory. They will always be the best enemies in Bayonetta 1. God, that Kickstarter was a shock. I was like, fuck yeah, I'm gonna give you my money. Take my goddamn money. Just give me the game. Ah, you son of a bitch. Forget the joys can be very annoying. I'm going to destroy this one in just a few stomps. There we go. God. I will be playing Wonderful 101 a little to later tonight, okay? Not sure what to do in Wonderful 101, but, you know, maybe Operation 101. I'm getting some weird frame rate hiccups here when I shouldn't be. I have a feeling I know why. Give me one second. Because earlier today, I was running Photoshop. And I forget that Adobe is very, very CPU hungry sometimes. But I have a software here to kill every single Adobe product running in the background. Hold on. I'm gonna stop that shit. Yes. Hold on. There we go. Okay, there we go. That should be better. I hope. <laughs> I mean, it, it, all, it can also just be my recording software that's like interfering. Although it kind of sucks because it wasn't like this before.
There we go. Out of here. I mean, at the end of the day, it is your choice. I'm just giving you my insight as a person who plays the Wonderful 101 a lot. Get out of here. Nice. <laughs> it's okay. I'm not here for perfection. Another day I'll do a pure platinum run. <laughs> Ah, shit. I should have seen that coming. Perry time. <laughs> God, this game feels so good to play every time. I'll never understand the people who say this game plays so... I'll never understand the people that say Bayonetta 1 is clunky. Like, seriously, where do you guys get this idea that Bale 1 is clunky? This game is smooth as fuck. It just requires you to be frame perfect. Like, I swear, the buffering that Bayonetta 2 and 3 do, I think it just conditioned players to play more relaxed. When you play the game with frame perfect timing, it is just smooth as fuck. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> I'm bad at the game, so it's clunky. They'll never admit to their to their uh, shortcomings. There's nothing wrong with preferring Bayonetta 2 over 1, okay? Look, I want to I want to set the record straight here because people think I get mad at anyone when they say they prefer Bayonetta 2 over 1. There is nothing wrong with preferences. If you like 2 more than 1, that is great. Okay? I'm not here to change your mind. However, that being said, when a lot of people tell me they prefer 2 over 1 because the combat is better, I feel like I want to explain to them why 
I'm not going to say they're wrong for saying that. But there's definitely a lot of shortcomings that Bayonetta 2 has that I really wish didn't have that the first game has. Because in a lot of ways, Bayonetta 2 does make heavy improvements on what 1 did, but it also simultaneously makes changes that feels like it limits the potential that Bayonetta 1 had, you know? Yo, Zep! How's it going, buddy? <laughs> I prefer to... I mean, you do just have to respect a lot of the enemies in 2 a lot more. Yeah, yeah, more respect is needed. I remember having a heavy discussion with a lot of... Not a lot. There's one particular person... That I do have respect for when it comes to having discussions about action games. And he's one of the few that I respect a lot who just happens to prefer 2 over 1. And he tells me that the reason he prefers 2 over 1 is it trades in the stylish combat of the first game for a more brawler kind of experience where in order to really get the most out of Bayonetta 2, you have to not only respect the enemies you're fighting against, but you're also rewarded for using particular weapons against certain enemies. It's kind of like Devil May Cry 3, where some weapons have an elemental thing to it, where if you use it against certain enemies, they take more damage. He explains to me that it's kind of similar with that in Bayonetta 2, where some enemies are more susceptible to certain weapons. And I don't want to say he's wrong. And I'm not going to say he's wrong. But I can I can understand that aspect. Where it's a lot more about strategically selecting what you want to fight against certain enemies. I just wish it didn't need to be purely that. Because the thing about Devil May Cry 3. Is that while you can use certain weapons to fight against certain enemies. You still have liberty. Liberty. Of using whatever you want against certain enemies once you understand their um what's that word i'm looking for there was a word for this where when you play devil may cry 3 on a higher difficulty you're not able to actually launch the enemy until you reach a certain value of damage where you can then lift them into the air and once they're in the air as long as you can keep them juggling you are free to keep to continue doing your combos, but the moment they touch the floor, then they go back to a state where you need to hit them enough times again before you can launch them back up into the air. Stun, the stun value. There we go. Oh, hey, D Cosmic. <laughs> what a way for you to show up. <laughs> I just realized. <laughs> well, how's it going, buddy? So I can understand from that perspective why some may prefer Bayonetta 2 over 1, and that is totally fine. You know, I'm not going to hold it against them. Having a different mindset for these games is definitely helpful. Because I enjoy Bayonetta for one... I enjoy Bayonetta for the stylish uh, approach. While Bayonetta 2 is more about playing effectively. And that is totally fine. As a matter of fact, um, I remember Drazer. Drazer did a video talking about how Combo Mads is not the end-all be-all when it comes to the explanation of why some games are better than others. You know, Combo Mads is just one aspect to these games that we like, you know. Just because you're able to juggle an enemy en endlessly in here doesn't necessarily mean that it's a better game. You know, and, and I agree with that. Because a lot of people seem to think that that's all I'm looking for in an action game. Oh, if you can juggle these enemies, it's a lot of fun. Not entirely. Because there are action games where you can't do that, but it's still a lot of fun to play, like God Hand. God Hand does have juggles, but not to the same extent as Devil May Cry and Bayonetta. But it's still an amazing game to play, because that game is definitely about playing effectively. It's about learning to spot the enemy's weakness. It's kind of like playing Punch-Out. I always tell people that God Hand is like playing a free-roaming Punch-Out game, like NES Punch-Out, which makes it so much fun.
Yeah, no, Bayonetta 1 gets very repetitive, repetitive with its stage designs. They do it in a very clever way, admittedly. Like how Bayonetta has to go to um, Purgatorio. So it just so happens to be the same location she was in, just in heaven. You know, it's kind of funny. Does that make the game bad? Not really. I don't know why people get so twisted at the idea of stages being repeated. It's their way of saving resources, ultimately. Sometimes variety isn't a good thing. But if there's a lack of variety, that doesn't necessarily make it bad either. It's all about finding clever ways of making it work. You know what I mean? Yeah, DMC3 was the masterclass in reusing assets. Despite all those shortcomings, it's still a magnificent game. Oh yeah, and then DMC4. DMC4 is the ultimate how not to reuse assets. Because Jesus Christ, it is so obvious. So painfully obvious that the game is just incomplete. the Snyder's cut. <laughs> Imagine if we actually did get a Snyder's cut for uh, for DMC4. <laughs> makes me wonder just how much... It makes me wonder... I I'm sure you guys are the Double May Cry experts because I never really dug deep into this, but has Capcom ever shown off any details on what they could have done if they actually fully completed Devil May Cry 4? Are there any art books or any discussions that talks about that? Because I sure would like to learn more about that. Ah shit, off-screen fireballs! The worst kind of fireballs. There we go. Hey Flight Shift, how's it going buddy? As far as Itano has shared, they realized from Jump how strapped they were on resources, so they just dialed into making the combat good. Well, <laughs> that's definitely, um... 
making the combat good is definitely underselling just how good the combat actually is in DMC4. Everyone will say that it's top notch, top DMC. So yeah, DMC4 is the best half of video game to ever exist. God, that reboot. I don't want to say DMC DE or DMC Devil May Cry was a bad game, but it certainly was the kind of game to come out at the wrong time at the wrong place or wrong place at the wrong time. Because it's like the way DMC 4 ended left people hanging. And I can only imagine how painful it was for a lot of Devil May Cry fans. Because something you guys need to know about me is that while I am a Devil May Cry fan, I wasn't there from the start. I never did get the chance to play Devil May Cry on the PS2 when it first debuted. In fact, my first Devil May Cry experience was DMC Devil May Cry. And that was because someone gifted me the game. And then I backtracked and experienced 1, 2, and 3, and then 4, and then 5, and yeah, those are amazing games. Well, 2 to some extent is not that bad, <laughs> but it is boring. Oh boy. You don't get to uppercut me. There we go. Ow! Hachi machi. That's painful. Alright. Get out of here. You. You know what? Bayonetta on the Switch is not that bad. Probably one of the more optimized Platinum Games experience you'll have on a Switch. As a matter of fact, the same goes for Bayonetta 2 and 3. Well, well 2 is really good on the Switch as well. 3, well, you have no choice but to play it on the Switch. And for what it's worth, it runs okay. Oh yeah, no, DMC2 is the best third-person shooter of all time. It definitely is. It's amazing. Nothing says Devil May Cry quite like, quite like shooting at a distance. <laughs> oh god, the color-coded enemies. Terrible design. I think the only time I've ever seen a game do color coding correctly is Wonderful 101. The double stomp. Okay. I see how it is. You gotta go. Yeah, I wish Wonderful 101 had a training mode. Or at least a way for you to stay in the loading screen. Which is ridiculous that one that Platinum Games never thought to include that because the game loads so damn fast on the PC and PS4. 
Like, seriously, you load in and then it disappears immediately. You would think Platinum Games would realize, whoa, maybe someone wants to practice a little longer like they could on the Wii U. But no, they never bothered to fix that. Being a wonderful 101 fan is painful because the game is amazing, but it could be better if they just added these little extra tiny things to it. Which, you know, Platinum Games will never do. Oh yeah, that's right, you're doing the, 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 the Chai cosplay. I would love to see pictures of that. Like, once you have it completed, of course. Sorry, I'm trying to look at the chat, but I'm also messing up here. So I'm going to focus for a little bit. There we go. I needed that. Oh no, wow. My timing was really off there. Damn. I'm actually sad that I died at such an early early part of the game. Because normally I can make it all the way to verse 4 before it actually gets difficult. But I guess I was too concentrated on the chat. <laughs> Bro, why does YouTube keep pausing the stream when I switch tabs? I don't know, man. Maybe it's the browser. I usually... I use Chrome for my browsing. And there's a good there's a good extension you can get on Chrome where when you're on YouTube, you can pull out the video and leave it on a window and it plays anywhere you want it to and you can size and resize it any way you want. That's what I use when whenever I'm at work. I always have like a special window that I put in a corner and I make it pretty small so that no one can see what I'm watching. I mean, there is no rule against watching YouTube when you're at work, but the things that I watch are very weird, so I don't want people to know the shits that I watch. Well, okay, the stuff that I don't watch is not that weird. I'm busy binging through Quentin Review's video because he recently he recently released his 38 hour review on the Beverly Hillbillies and I am going to watch through it all because his videos are entertaining you know <laughs> okay well unfortunately I died in Bayonetta so that means I'm going to get kicked out and go into the wonderful 101 I hear there's people walking around here Okie dokie. Hold on. Oh yeah, there's there are a lot of differences between Bayonetta one and Bayonetta two's gameplay major differences but those differences are very nuanced in terms of their properties when it comes to the gameplay between bayonetta 1 and 2 they're pretty identical in terms of like combo routes and abilities so on and so forth of course there are some new abilities that they added to bayonetta 2 that you can't have access to in one like one of the new abilities they added in bayonetta 2 is the umber climax which is kind of a it kind of functions like the devil trigger where at the push of a button, you can um, go into this powerful state 
where all your attacks are very powerful and it allows you to sweep out all the enemies effortlessly. Stuff like that, you know, but but in terms of like the nuance, you know, there's a lot of in-depth mechanics that are very much different between both games. But there's stuff that casual players are not going to be aware of. There's stuff that only the hardcore fans will pick up. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and... Huh. The wonderful 101 seems to be loading up on the wrong window. I'm going to fix that. Hold on a sec. I believe the wonderful 101 has an option to fix this. Hold on. Huh. That's weird. It is. <laughs> Wonderful 101 is loading up on the wrong window, and that was never a problem before. Let me see if I can fix that. Give me one second. I was not expecting this weird technical difficulty today. Yeah, what the fuck? Game's loading up on the wrong window. It never did that before. And there's an option to choose the window, but not letting me pick the window at all. Gotta be kidding me. What happened here? Oh, wow. I, I can't believe this. First time I've ever had an issue like this. Let me see if there is a way I can fix this. That is not fair. The worst part is, I have the game on windowed mode so that I could drag it onto this screen, but the ratio is still wrong and there's no way to change that. Let me see. Let's see. Assuming the monitor setting graphics, try Windows, Shift, Arrow key. <laughs> Unbelievable, this game, man, I swear to Christ. Oh my god, what the fuck is going on here? This game is not playing nice with me today. This is insane. What is going on here? I wasn't envisioning this game to give me this kind of issue. This is... 
It even has the option to change display, but it's not doing that. <laughs> wow. All right, hold on. Let me try one more thing. I don't want to do this, but it leaves me with no choice. Hold on. Hold on. I think I know why it's acting up like this, and it's because I made the monitor on the left the main one. So I'm going to try to change that to make it so that the monitor in front of me is the correct one. Hold on. This is very annoying. Hey, thanks for watching uh, my videos, though. Like, thank you. That, that means a lot to me. There are a lot of people that love the content that I make. And I promise you all, I will continue to make more content in the coming days. Like, one of the things I want to do is get back to doing more Bayonetta Pure Platinum videos for part two and then eventually part three. Nope, it's... This is annoying. I, I am so pissed off right now. This is so fucking annoying. Christ. <laughs> this is exactly what I needed tonight. And it never had this problem before. It never did. This is the very first time it's having this issue. It it came as a, as a goddamn surprise. So instead, okay, I have the game running now. The alien invasion of Earth will be met by a group of fearless warriors that number just 100 souls. 
100 wonderful defenders of our world. Their faces are forever masked. Their tombs are forever unknown. Damn. And now the game crashed. Come on. This is so annoying. <laughs> I am so sorry for the delay. I just was not expecting this whatsoever. I don't get it. It has the option to output the monitor, but it just does not want to do that. So hold on. Let me save the option and then load the game back up and maybe it'll show up on this screen. No, it doesn't. This is so dumb. It, it, it just goes to this. It doesn't save. That's the part that bothers me. It doesn't save. Apply changes. Okay. Okay, I've applied the change. Unbelievable. <laughs> Worst comes to worst, I could hook up the. PS4 version if I feel like it, but I don't feel like it. Oh my god. Why is it doing this now? The, the, the thing is, I have my monitor on this side and it's tilted to the left and it squeezes the image. So it's not like I could flip it around if I felt like it. Wow, I give up, I give up, man. I, I wasn't expecting a new problem from Wonderful 101. <laughs> oh God, it was never like this before either. And I, I, I know I hooked up my, my system properly. Let me see if there's more information I can find online. Uh, unbelievable. Um, I don't want to waste time here. I do apologize. Um, I could always just jump to another game. What game do you guys want me to jump into? Like, I'll play any other action game as long as it actually behaves. It's not going to be the wonderful one-on-one tonight. I will, however, after I finish doing the stream, I will sit down to try to figure out why the Wonderful 101. No, I'm not going to do Hi-Fi Rush tonight because I want to make an entire stream dedicated to just Hi-Fi Rush. Like, this is just me doing tests, you know what I mean? 
So I want to play a game that I'm more familiar with where I could just goof around and just do random shit, you know? Like, let me put it to you like this. I want to stream a game I've previously streamed before. In the in the coming days, I'll be streaming brand new stuff. I mean, yeah, I do have... You know what? I could always boot up DMC4. I'll do that. I'll even display my controller. I'll do DMC4. I'll do four. Hold on. Before I do though. There we go. You guys should see the controller. And now to boot up DMC4. I sure hope DMC4 does not give me the same problems. I don't expect it to because DMC4 um, runs like a dream no matter what platform you're on. It, it loaded up onto the screen. Perfect. All right, so hold on a sec. I'm going to add the game. DMC4. And... Um, let's see. Double May Cry 4. I've already played Pizza Tower one too many times, but I do intend to go back to it to do the noise run at some point. Hold on, just making some adjustments here. And at some point, I do intend to stream um, Stella Blade, but for me to do that, I would need to buy uh, a PS5. I do intend to buy a PS5 in the future, so, you know, be on the lookout for that. There we go. How's that working out for you guys? This game's kind of loud, though. Hold on. Hold on a sec. While I adjust the audio here. Damn it. <laughs> I hate that when I touch another window, Devil May Cry just goes away. On what platform is Rise of the Ronin available? Is it on PC? Because if it is, I don't mind trying that one out. The PS5 has no games. Yeah, you're right. It has no games. But I mean, Stellar Blade eventually will come to PC, but I kind of want to play from the beginning like be one of the first people to try it out so that i can announce that it's shit right from the very beginning <laughs> now i do want to apologize ahead of time that i am not the best devil may cry player so please 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 don't be judging me because i can't do those cool guard flying tricks or whatnot i've only had about Two years of experience playing Devil May Cry 4. Hold on, I just want to make some adjustments here. I hate that Devil May Cry, the window for Devil May Cry just always goes away. Is there a way to fix that? Like, I'm sure that DMC4 has gone through so much modding that there has to be some multi-monitor support that someone has done for this. Either that or, um, or there's an option here to make it so that it doesn't do that. Like, it definitely needs a borderless window support. Okay, let's, let's try it out. Let's see. I 
like the fifth game. I like it. I know there's a lot of hardcore fans that are going to say, like, it's not good because it lacks inertia and whatnot. And I agree that it lacks that stuff. But I'd be lying if I said it wasn't enjoyable for me. I know the shortcomings it has. It's very slow. And it's very floaty. I do not like that. There are mods to fix it. So, you know, there's that. Timing is a little off for some of these moves. It's also been a while since I played this game, actually. I don't remember the last time I touched this. It's funny, it sounds th that you're saying that it never occurred to you that some people have problems with DMC5. It's kind of on the same wavelength with how people don't like Bayonetta 2 compared to 1. There's a lot of similarities between the dispute of DMC5 and 4 with Bayonetta 2 and 1. Wow, I am so terrible at this game. I'm starting to get the feel for it now. Ah, that always sucks. Get out of here. I'm just amazed the amount of DMC memes and hot takes are made by people that don't even play the games. <laughs> Tell me about it. Same shit happens on our Bayonetta, if anything. It's either meme posting or the same fucking people, the same goddamn people coming in to ask incredibly redundant questions with even more redundant polls. Like, hey, would you guys like me to do a voice of Bayonetta? Yes, no, I hate you, blah. It's like, why do you make a poll for this shit? Like, don't ask, do that shit. 
No one's gonna say like no to you or yes to you. Just do that shit. You don't need to ask permission from the Bayo gods or something. No, and then there, and then there's also those posts where the guy where people are saying I expect a Bayonetta two reveal. I mean, a Bayonetta four reveal uh, when Switch two gets revealed. And I'm just telling people right now, don't get your expectations too high. It feels too soon for a Bayonetta four. And most of the response I get from that is, oh no, they're definitely working on a Bayonetta four because they heard how bad Bayonetta three was, so they're making a four as an apology. And I'm like, bro, that is some crazy twisted universe you're wi you're living in for you to be thinking that's what platinum games are doing right now no don't do the voice do not voice bayonetta whatever you do do not mention Hel helena taylor biggest mistake of my life Wrong input. <laughs> I know, nobody mentioned her, but her name always pops up whenever voice talking is involved. But god, I really, really hate the Bayonetta subreddit these days. I don't even know why I still go there. No, don't interrupt me while I'm using my suitcase. Yeah, don't mention Bayonetta 3 in that subreddit. It's not as bad as the Sonic Reddit. Yeah, it's not as bad as the Sonic Reddit. Although, to be perfectly honest, the Sonic Reddit isn't too bad these days. They're kinda chill, kinda. It's more just a, a bunch of people circle jerking the, the ones that are starting to say that this game from five years ago is good now. Because that seems to be the new Sonic cycle these days, where a game that everyone previously hated is now a game that everyone loves now. But that's because... A lot of people seem to forget that every new Sonic game that comes out, some kid is going to experience that for the very first time. And when he's old enough to be on the internet, he'll be the one to say, hey, that game you hated is a game I like that I'm going to explain why. And that's the vicious cycle that we're going to be stuck in. So about 10 years from now, Frontiers will be the greatest video game to ever exist. Just like how... Actually, no, I take that back because Frontiers is actually kind of good. In about 10 years from now, or maybe 8, I don't know how long ago the game came out, I forgot. Forces is going to be considered one of the best Sonic games, and it was, and it's clearly underrated. So expect those kinds of discussions sometime in the future. Yes, <laughs> 
Oh, Jesus. Get out of here. I must reiterate, I am not good at this game, okay? So, again, I don't want people to expect me to be doing these crazy wild stuff on the fly. Damn it! Okay, definitely terrible against these dudes. There we go, get out of here. <laughs> I like that. You may not be a five star chef, but you're still cooking. I gotta remember that one. Son of a bitch. I hate these dogs. Get out of here. Oh, dude. Fantasy Star Online, man. Those were the days. I wish I could go back to those days where we were just playing Fantasy Star Online without worry about responsibilities.
Damn it. Get out of here. There we go. You did not show on me. You did no show on me when we set, set up some stuff back in the day. I'm really sorry about that, dude, man. We were supposed to hang out too, but... Time really got the best of me. I am really sorry. Like, I forgot to tell you that at some point I was going to be moving all the way to New York, and that's where I am now, you know? But I swear I'll make it up to you somehow because these past few months have been very difficult for me. Because, like, I don't know if I, I mentioned it to you, and I, I didn't mention it to my stream here, but the reason I, I am in New York now is because of my job. I relocated to Buffalo because the job that I'm working at, you know, like they, they, they needed me to continue working with them because I've been with them for 15 years and we had to, you know, come up with a solution because the, the, the office that I worked at, they, they shut down and they laid off a lot of people. So, you know, I had to come up here. And so there was a lot of things that I had to do to tie up things, but it just, I ran out of time when it was, when it came time for me to hang out with you. But I'll let you know when I come to visit Florida. I have absolutely no idea what happened to Guajito, man. Last I heard from them, they went on a tour, but that's about it. But that was like 10 years ago. Oh, yeah, man. I remember when we were helping out with them during their one of their performances. I have never forgotten that. That was so much fun. Yeah, we did. <laughs> I remember that little warp tour. <laughs> I 
I just remember when we were at that bar, one of one of my coworkers kept going around talking to ladies and convincing them to buy the shirts that we were selling. That's why he kept showing up to our place to buy a bunch of shirts. And, oh yeah, and I remember when we were at the Biscayne Boulevard, that tour, I remember that one. It was a lot of fun. Again, those were the days. No, I just... No, I mean, there were a lot of people walking around, but I know there was one particular person who came to me at the end of the tour to tell me, dude, I came, I kept walking around and asking ladies to buy these shirts. That's why you see me going around a lot. I remember. I don't remember how he looked like. I just remember the guy coming up to me and telling me about that. Trying to reminisce in all these things while I'm also balancing trying to do all these cool combos in Double Might Cry. Timing on the block is very difficult. Damn it, he's walking away. No. Eh, if I could just get him in my if I could just get him in my range. Oh well. I, I guess it might have been the both of you. Because I know my coworker was telling me all about it the following day. Ah! Hate these dudes so much! Ah! Now he wants to go for the dive bomb. Okay, well he's dead. But there's still another one over here I gotta take care of. Take care, Stylesman. Until next time. There's definitely a lot of action games I want to discuss soon with you. Oh yeah, no. I know, I know how it was. <laughs> God, I actually really, I really do miss those days.
get out of here. God, I really wish... I would love... I would love it if Anarchy Reigns got a PC release. That's all we need. Just just a, a, a PC port of the game, along with, if they want to, fixing up the network so that it can have dedicated servers, and it would be freaking beautiful. But I do wish it was popular, yeah. I really wish it was big. It could have been Platinum Games' ultimate Smash Brothers title. You know, throwing in all their little silly characters into this local multiplayer would be awesome Oh, no, I still like Sonic. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't get to talk much about Sonic here, though, because my channel is more about action games. <laughs> That's why you always see me playing these games like Double May Cry and Bayonetta and Wonderful 101. Although Wonderful 101 had to be on hiatus now because, Jesus Christ, I don't know what is going on, but that game just does not want to play nice with me tonight. But, yeah, I do still cover Sonic from time to time. I know at some point I would like to do a Frontiers run. Like, even Frontiers has combat action, surprisingly enough. I even did a combo video for it, which is kind of funny. That's why I... I I would love to see Platinum Games make a Sonic game. It will never happen, but I could fucking wish for one. Because Sonic could work so well with a combat action game. The closest you're going to get is either Unleashed with the Werewolf or Frontiers, which has a lot of good ideas, but it's just filled with so much bad ideas. Bastard! I also like playing fighting games. We should definitely do some fighting game tournaments here. Some Marvel, baby! Because I love playing Marvel vs. Capcom. And this asshole shows up. Get out of my face! Ah! I was supposed to block that, but I mistimed that. <laughs> Get out of here. 
Oh no, a lot of Sonic characters could definitely have some incredible action combat gameplay. Knuckles being one of them. Hey, dude. Dude, please tell me you played Sonic Battle. Because Sonic Battle is such a phenomenal Sonic game. I, I love that this, that was one of the few times where you get to see Sonic Team make some really cool sprite work, giving these characters some creative combat abilities, and they never did anything else with it ever since. Why? I never beat you in uh, in that card game. We never did. You and Keith played the game much better than I could. I was never good at card games. Like, I actually recently booted up Fantasy Star Online Episode 3. And looking at my progress with that game I barely did anything with that game because as much as I enjoyed it card games were never really my forte you did a lot better than me <laughs> I only did the sire, sire killer thing because um, I thought I had a strategy against you but it never worked <laughs> I don't have my super, but I can take care of this guy. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, you definitely were lucky. <laughs> you always had such crazy luck in a lot of games. Like I said, I really do miss those days. Get on the floor, you bastards.
Get out of here. Damn. Kind of wish you could just come straight down when you uh, taunt them. <laughs> Taking so long, he's doing these attacks on me that I rarely ever get to see him do. <laughs> there we go, get out of here. Yeah, Wonderful 101 has taunts, and they actually benefit you. You get an enhanced uh, strength for a little bit. Gets in the way. I'll just take him out first. Oh. 
I just think they wanted to keep it the same as before. Which, I don't blame them for keeping it like that. Not to mention... Not to mention... There's not a lot of characters that Platinum Games actually owns. They were able to use Bayonetta because of Sega's permission. I'm sure they could have thrown in more Sega characters if they wanted to, like Jack or basically the rest of the Mad World characters or even Sam from, uh, from Vanquish. But when you start getting into territories like, uh, like Metal Gear Rising and Astral Chain, that's a little different because those are other companies, you know, Konami and Nintendo respectively. And I'm not sure if they'd be up for letting Platinum Games use their stuff in games that they don't publish. Man, Mad World. You know what? Mad World should be a game I should stream. I have that game here. Not only do I have the game, but I have it signed by um, the voice actor of uh, Jack. What's his name? Um, wow, I forgot his name. He's the voice of Tom in, um, in Tsunami. S Steve Blum. There we go. Yes. I got his autograph. And he autographed it in red ink, which is so cool. I forgot how to deal with these ladies. I know with Nero you can pull them, but I'm not sure how Dante can weaken them. Ah, damn it. Shit, man, I forget you do a lot of characters for cosplaying. That's very impressive. I wish I had that kind of time to be building these things so that I can make my own cosplay. If I had the time and the money, I would love to do a Tager cosplay from, from Blaze Blue. I would also like to try to beef myself up so that I can look more like Tager. Just in general, not as a cosplay purpose. The best thing about my new workplace is that they have a gym. So I'm going to actually sign up for that gym so I can start getting some beef.
Guilty Gear Johnny cosplays. Hey, if there's no cosplay for that, now's the time for you to do it. God damn, I hate these dudes so much! I remember seeing your progress for Chai on Twitter. Like I saw you scanning the guitar, which is really freaking cool. I can't wait to see your the, the I can't wait to see the final look. need to get out of my face. Oh man, a Wonder Blue cosplay would be awesome. I've seen Wonderful 101 cosplayers and they pull it off beautifully. Did you ever get your um, Wonderful 101 pendant like this thing here? Because I feel like that would work so well as like with, with the actual cosplay. It's not as big as what you see in the game, but it's still, it's still pretty serviceable. Wrong enemy, but I'll take it. Ah, no way, I'm dead. All it took was one mistake. Well, it is getting late, and as much as I want to continue playing this game, I definitely need my rest. Especially since tomorrow, I'm going to be busy in the morning preparing my food. Because uh, I got to go do the groceries in the morning. Got to do some laundry. Then after I do that, then I'll prepare the food. And then once I leave that food cooking... I can then focus on doing a Bayonetta 2 Tag Climax stream. So yes, tomorrow I will get started on doing the Bayonetta Tag Climax sometime around 11 in the morning Eastern Standard Time. I think that'll work fine. A raid? Um, 
You know, I've never actually done a raid before. I don't know how that works. Well, I know what a raid is. I just don't know how to actually do it. Let me see. Let me jump on. Give me one second. Jump on. Raid insert name. Give me one second. I'll do it just for you. And then after that, I'll just call it a night. Actually, before I actually do, before I do the raid, let me go ahead and shut off the YouTube section. So for those of you that are watching this on YouTube, I bid you all farewell. You guys have a good night. All right. I'll see you all tomorrow. Wait one second, I'll be able to connect it. Hold on. All right. See you later, YouTube viewers. Peace.